Step one, collect your replays that you want to use in your video. Step two is keyframing. Press K to set a camera angle, play your replay and go to a new angle and hit K again to set a path of motion. The more camera angles you make, the faster it'll move. But if you space them out throughout the replay, your camera will move slowly. You try to follow a consistent shape or arc when you're making your cameras so the camera won't be jumping from place to place. Step three is screen recording. You have to record your replays on the screen so that you can use them as videos in your editing program. How powerful your computer is will greatly determine the quality of your recordings. Step four is picking a song if you haven't already and putting your new replay video files into your editing program. The editing software you pick is up to you. Some range from zero to hundreds of dollars. Some are for professionals and some are for beginners. You have to go on the internet and look and see which one fits your budget. As for choosing your song, you can basically choose any genre. The tour bash can be fit in some way to any genre if you want it to. Just make sure that it has a nice rhythm and beat to follow. Alright, so I have all my clips on the timeline. Uh, and I have one of me running from a ground transition. And I have this keyframe to replay of a kitchen spar. Here I have uh, the ending of the kitchen spar with a ground transition because the original kitchen spar recording I didn't add a ground transition but for the sake of teaching you how to make a transition the easy way I added one here. So the song I chose was Club to Death. Uh, this song you may know. Alright, um, how I first start off, so I usually like make the beginning title. Once again, whatever your program, however your program does it, do it the way your program allows you. So I'm going to just put it right at the beginning. And maybe I'll just do a, a dissolve in. All, all editing programs have a dissolve of some kind, so just put it there. I'm going to start right with the action. Um, replays are typically very slow when you record them, so you want to speed it up. However, your program allows you to speed it up. So that's what I do. It's gonna, it's gonna lag because my computer is bad, but. So you can either just let the replay play out at whatever speed you choose, or you can edit it to the beat. That boom, boom, cut, but the that boom, cut. For the sake of this keeping it basic, if this is a montage, you just typically let it play out. And sometimes even if you just let it play out, it syncs up to the beat automatically, like this moment here. Like that. That moment synced up perfectly and I didn't edit it. So sometimes in montages that can happen and save you a whole world of trouble. Uh, and then for transitions, if you want to go to the next replay, the end of your keyframe replay, keyframe it to like go into the ground like that, into the ground. What you're going to do is find the point like here. You're going to get your next replay. It looks like this. Using the similar colors also make the transition seem more, uh, smooth I guess so and then you maybe add like a dissolve or something a dissolve effect and you can see if you can get that all right so here's our transition it goes down into the gray ground and I cut it to when it rises in the next replay off of the gray ground and it looks like this I put a dissolve in the middle So that's a transition, you know, and then you would just go into the next replay and edit how you want to the music or not with the music. You can add effects, you know, that, uh, like, oh, that moment. Let me just get this moment so I can show you. Because I saw a really interesting moment of sync. See it right there. 
See, like, I didn't even edit that. <laughs> so that's a cool moment you would want to emphasize. So, for example, if you wanted to... I do this effect a lot. Just, like, play with the colors a little bit. Your thing probably won't look like this because most people use PC and I'm on Mac. But I'm, your, your program should have a feature that allows this. But what I mean is... Uh, I'm going to use the color mask, for example. Let's see, what can we do here? Oh, that's cool. Maybe, like, add, like, a dissolve. So it's very seamless. And now check it out. Ah, what did I just press? All right. And then we're going to watch it. See, that's the, an effect, I guess, to emphasize that spin moment. Um, and also, before you uh, wrap up your video, you want to kind of edit the colors to what you want. A lot of programs have, like, uh, looks that you can choose from, different kind of color uh, grading looks. Most of them will probably look really ugly, but then it's up to you to... Um, to tweak it, I guess, and make it look the way that you want it to look. And this is optional, something I do, because I'm stupid. So for example, if you add these aspect ratio bars, it's this right here. Uh, don't cover up all your shot, but just like give it a little like just black bars, you know, and it'll make your edit look a lot more cinematic. Stuff like sound effects is optional. Wherever you get your sound effects, you can add punch effects. Um, people who are more professionally into editing, they use an application called um, Real Smart Motion Blur, RSMB, or uh, Twixer, which is for changing speed smoothly. RSMB, RSMB is for adding motion blur to your motions so they come off as more smooth. Um, and those things can be found on the internet, legally or illegally. It's very easy to acquire illegally, but I'm not telling you to go do that. Cough, cough. So let me show you, for example, uh, real smart motion blur. These are my settings I use. You can kind of customize your own and save it as a preset. I'm sure most programs will let you do that. So I add real smart motion blur, and you can already see the movement here. It's a little blurry when it goes fast. If I turn it off, it becomes clear. Turn it back on, it becomes blurry. And it makes your movements look a lot more smooth. You always want to make your videos on 60 frames per second, as most Torbash uh, replays will look the best on 60 frames per second. Um, and all right, let's export this small little chunk that we made, see how it looks. Alright, so it's definitely not the best video. The sync of the moves could use a lot more work and it's a little too fast, but those are things you can always tweak and go back. But basically up until now, I've showed you all the steps that you need to put together a video in whatever program. I have shown effects that most programs have. Um, and when you export your video, you can upload it to YouTube. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was very useful. Now go make some videos.